Now, you might have heard that scripture as uh, saying the wealth of the, the wicked is laid up for the righteous. I think that's how the King James actually states it. Chapter 13, verse 23 of Proverbs. Much food is in the tilled land of the poor, but there are those who are destroyed because of injustice. He who spares his rod of discipline hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines dis diligently and punishes him early. This is what we referred to a few weeks ago uh, as nip it in the bud, our grandparents or grandmothers would say, right? Nip it in the bud, punish it early, right? Uh, the inappropriate behavior. The uncompromisingly righteous eats to his own satisfaction, but the stomach of the wicked is in want. Proverbs 14, every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish one tears it down with her own hands. He who walks in uprighteousness reverently and worshipfully fears the Lord. But he who is contrary and devious in his ways despises him. In the fool's own mouth is a rod to shame his pride. But the wise men's lips preserve him. Where no oxen are, the grain crib is empty. But much increase of crop comes by the strength of the ox. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness breathes out falsehoods. You remember how we've said many times that it seems like there's some people that just, uh, you know, they, they just lie, right? They, they can't help but lie. They lie about some of the silliest and trivial, the most trivial things, but all, all, all they are is a lie. Everything they say is a lie. You can count on nothing they say because it just, it just breathes, they just breathe out, <laughs> breathe out those falsehoods. Proverbs 14, verse 6. A scoffer seeks wisdom in vain, for his very attitude blinds and deafens him to it. But knowledge is easy to him, being teachable, who understands. You know, this is a very important um, note because we have mentioned many times, and often we may even question ourselves you know how how is it that people just cannot see the truth how is it that they just don't want to see the light they just don't want to turn from their wicked ways we hear this, this is another scripture that sort of verifies and corroborates what we've read before because the the scoffer hopes to find wisdom and notice that the wisdom is in uh, is the capital w uh, which implies the Lord, the Almighty God, because He is that, you know, He is wisdom, right? One of His characteristics, as we talked about earlier. But the, the, the scoffer, the person that's making fun of you, and uh, or she, she says she's a Christian, she thinks he's, oh, he's always speaking scriptures, you know, you know, scoffing at you. Were you saying that, you know, be prepared because the way of the Lord is coming, the day of the Lord is coming? They go, oh, well, you know, that's true, that's true, and that's not coming. It's been, we've been hearing that for years, and it's not coming. Those people that scoff, right? Well, they're constantly, you know, they're, they're oftentimes the same people that are oftentimes seeking stuff. They're constantly seeking questions, asking questions, running around, but it just doesn't sink in. Why? Because it says here, the scripture says, for his very attitude blinds and deafens him to that wisdom. That very attitude blinds and deafens him to wisdom. But knowledge is easy to him who understands because he's teachable. Have you, you ever noticed that there are some people that are teachable and some people that just aren't? Some people, you know, even if they come to and come to you and ask you for something, and you try to give them instruction, they just they just don't they just won't listen. They're just not teachable, you know, just not teachable. Verse seven: Go from the presence of a foolish and self confident man, for you will not find knowledge on his lips. And this again. 
is a repetition of the Lord's message about coming out from among them. Coming out from among them. Coming out from among whom? Fools. Coming out from among whom? Those who are boastful, scoffful, guileful, lawless, treacherous, unclean, sinful, practicing sin, right? Living, wallowing in sin. Come out from among them. Come out from the worldly. Come out from those things and those people who are contrary. Just you don't even have to say contrary to whom or what. Just contrary. If you you know, and especially in the South, we when we say, or you know, that person just contrary. Just contrary. Right? Because they're contrary to everything that is good and wise. Contrary to good counsel, contrary to wisdom, contrary to advice, contrary to instructions, contrary to everything. Even to those things that are so that could be good for them. But here we're speaking contrary to the Lord God. Verse 8. The wisdom, godly wisdom, both in capitals, wisdom, which is comprehensive in the insight, comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. What is wisdom? It's comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. This is why I so much like uh, the way that the Amplified uh, translates the scriptures, because again, it's inserting the Greek and the Hebrew right there in the sentence for you, so you can see the expanded uh, or enlightened, if you will, or uh, more in-depth understanding of the scripture. What is wisdom? Comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. Of the prudent is to understand his ways, but the folly of the self-confident fool is to deceive. Fools make a mock of sin, and sin mocks the fools. My, 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 my. That, that, that is a mouthful. <laughs> we heard this actually before. It said before that uh, uh, wickedness, right, leads the sin into, leads the sin into sinner, and sinner leads the, leads the, the fool into uh, destruction. Uh, we basically just read that a few moments ago, but here is a repetition. And remember, everything that's repeated is very important. Fools make a mock of sin. And that's that person who says, ah, you know, I can get away with this. I can get away with that. I can, I can do this. I can, I'm not going to, there's no consequence to my behavior. I can do what I want, when I want, wherever I want, to whom I want, with whom I want, at whatever time I want. And it doesn't matter. There's no rules. It's only my rule or my way is the highway, you know, all that kind of thing. Uh, the prideful, self-confident fool who doesn't want to listen to instruction. Well, very clearly here, the scripture says that fools make a mock of sin. They, they they belittle it. They de you know they go, I, that doesn't mean anything. I you know fornication that doesn't mean anything. Murder that doesn't mean anything. Lying that doesn't mean anything. Unforgiveness, selfishness that doesn't mean anything. Backbiting, betraying, gossiping, having that mistress. Oh, you know a little you know that that doesn't mean anything. I can do anything I want. But then the sin mocks the fool. That's directly from the scripture. Who are its victims? A sin offering made by them only mocks them, bringing them disappointment and disfavor. But among the upright, there is favor of God. The heart knows its own bitterness. And no stranger shares its joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tent of the upright shall flourish. It's interesting how they use the comparison house and tent, right? Because you think of a house as a sturdy, you know, maybe brick or wooden structure, right? You think of a tent as something flimsy, you could be blown away. But interesting that the house, the so-called sturdy thing, of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tent 
what may be perceived as you know temporary and 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 uh, insufficient shelter in the hands of the upright will flourish. Verse twelve: There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him, but at the end of it, it is the way of death. Now we just read. Um, we ju we just read in verse. 19 and 21, right, I believe, a few moments ago, about a man's plan. And here we see again that the ways of men seems right. You know, someone suggested, and I won't say the person's name, you could look it up uh, in, in the news, but they said, uh, you know, maybe um, since there's such all this uh, global warming and we can't, you know, the heat of the sun is destroying, you know, this and that and the other, and, you know, the, the warming is just continuing, continuing. Maybe we should just use some calcium carbonate and, and create this shield to block out the sun and therefore lower the temperature. <laughs> yeah, just think about that. Because is the calcium carbonate shield something that can be moved at will? No. It's something that stays there. So a continual cooling of the earth would probably not be a good thing. Hence the ice age, right? So <laughs> if, if you believe in that. But, but a man's way sometimes seems right. Even your own plans and I, my own time. You know, the things you think, well, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to set these things in motion. I'm going to do this, A, B, C, D, and E. And these are my plans and I'm going to make my plans. But again, if you've not sought the Lord about it, if you have not gotten wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit about those plans, then they probably are plans which only seem right or only appear to be correct. But in the end, it leads to death. Because we have not, in this instance, this scripture speaking about someone who's not sought the Lord. They're just going by their own plans. You know, and you know, you've done it yourself. Well, you're up, up on a day and you just figure, well, I'm just going to go do X, Y, Z. You head out to do X, Y, Z. And if you haven't sought the Lord, then the first thing that happens is you get in an accident. Or maybe you get two flat tires that day. Or maybe you run out of gas. Or, you know, you just stop and think about something. Or, or maybe it seems to go well, right? You go out and you've done all that shopping and everything seems to go well. And you have a great day and you come back. And then the next day, uh, you know, a, a tree limb falls through your roof. Well, that money that you spent yesterday, it seemed right, but now you don't have the money to repair the roof. You know what I mean? This is this is that same thing that we ought to be. That's why we ought to be praying and asking God about our every move and our every step. Even if it seems, oh, God doesn't worry about, you know, this little thing. God doesn't, is not concerned about the trivial little things. He's not worried about those things. It's important. And it certainly can be. Even in laughter. Verse 13, even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of mirth is heaviness and grief. This is to the person who is the fool, right? The backslider in heart from God and from fearing God shall be filled with the fruit of his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways with the holy thoughts and actions which his heart prompts and in which he delights. Here again is that sort of repetition. What you do with the Lord will succeed. What you do without him will not. Those who fear the Lord versus those who do not. And so you can get the gist of Proverbs 13 through 18. is a comparison all throughout. The comparison with the wise and the foolish. The wise and the foolish. And even in verse 15, the simpleton believes every word he hears. But the prudent man looks and considers well where he is going. You know, I mentioned several weeks ago, too, that uh, I often tell people and have told my children, you know, consider the source, right? Well, if everyone today would stop and consider the source of some of the things that they're hearing and reading, 
they would understand that perhaps it is not 